Fordism today, and it is essential for us to understand because if we want to be business entrepreneurs or managers or just basically well-informed individuals, it is essential to understand what type of economy that we are currently in and playing in and how the economy we're currently in came to be. So Fordism was a form of modern economic and it was economic way to producing products for mass production. Fordism brought forth key socio-political and economic strategies in America and Western European economies beginning in the 1930s and lasting till the early 1970s. These principles, which I'll easily expose shortly, were extremely successful, I cannot stress. They made America an economic powerhouse, but this was mainly because after World War II, America was the only superpower which wasn't bombed or completely annihilated from the war. Japan, Germany, Great Britain, Russia, France, etc. All these countries were decimated, leveled out during the war. Their infrastructure, the communications, their technologies, all heavily damaged. Since America was isolated though, and didn't experience direct warfare, America had a huge economic advantage compared to these countries after the war came to a close. None of its factories, none of its major cities were destroyed. All its infrastructure was still intact and easily converted from producing war goods such as tanks, uniforms, and missiles back into consumer goods. These uh, war plants turned back into creating machines like cars and home goods like appliances. Now remember, Fordism is all about how things are produced for mass market, for mass consumption. So this is where I'm going to dive in into the three principles of Fordism. First, it made way for the possibility of de-skilled labor force. Second, it centralized manager supervision of this de-skilled labor force. And third, it located surplus capital from the products produced in specific locations such as Detroit or New York City and other major cities to grow more industry and business. And in this example, I'll use Ford in Detroit. Now, Fordism, <laughs> the the name comes from Henry Ford um, and his implementation of the assembly line to make the production of his cars and trucks easily and effectively produced. The assembly line inevitably made jobs within factories much more basic. It de-skilled labor. It was a science. Uh, the de-skilling of labor also makes the hiring and firing of employees much more easier. Well, easier, sorry. The de-skilling of labor essentially means that if we were hired by Ford back in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, <laughs> we really would only really need to know basic movements or basic knowledge to perform our jobs well. And this really empowered the employer, but not the employees. Because the employers figured out if they had their assembly lines full of de-skilled labor, they could easily fire or hire new employees coming in and out because it's so easy to train new employees within 15 minutes to an hour because all of these factory assembly lines, jobs, only required basic movements, basic knowledge, like I said before. Another distinction within Fordism, differing from post-Fordism, which I'll touch on later, is that workers who work on the assembly line could be, uh, be, could be paid enough to buy the products the factory produced, which greatly differs from today. Within Fordism, within Fordism, Ford or GM or other car manufacturers built cars for the working wage middle class family. They targeted the huge working and middle class sector, the population in the United States, instead of what instead of what we see today. Today we see companies 
targeting specific niches, not a whole entire humongous population of middle class families. No, today we see GM commercial targeting an extremely specific uh, wealthy family, for example, for their Escalade brand. So that's post Fordism. Returning back to Fordism though, we also see the uh, agglomeration of businesses. Agglomeration m simply means a mass or a collection of things, a an assemblage. And in economics, uh, an agglomeration of businesses means a buildup of similar businesses of one industry in one location. So we know this very well. In Detroit, all car parts were built and made in Detroit. <laughs> from the 1930s to the 19 to the early 1970s and even before and after but really in that time period but now we know that Detroit no longer makes all the car parts for their uh, machines their cars or their commercial machines but imagine back in the day each business such as the tire company or the body car company were all located really closely together so a car could be made much more quickly. The body company didn't have to wait for the tires, the tires to come in cross country or cross the world from Argentina or China to finish the car or truck that they're producing. So an, an agglomeration was a very powerful force and an agglomeration sector don't just happen for car industries. It happened across different industries and they formed because of similar similarities within the industry and they helped each other succeed. But nowadays we don't see agglomeration. Now in post Fordism, we see the separation of industries or businesses. Businesses aren't located next to each other anymore. That's why Detroit is com was completely annihilated because now car parts are made in way different locations spread throughout the global economy. And interestingly enough, it's because the separation of car parts throughout the global economy is actually cheaper <laughs> than just making all the parts in one location. Isn't that crazy? I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. This is Helen from NudeAnswers.com. I really enjoy this. <laughs> so please check us out. Please support us. We need financial support very badly. Instead of going to a nine to five job, we do this. We stay at home and research all this information for you. So please check us out. Support if you can. Any amount helps. Even a dollar, really it does. Go to nudeanswers.com and click on the donation tab. And thanks so much, have a great day.